What's up guys, we're going to be doing some live brick filming today Which isn't really live because I don't have enough subscribers yet To do a proper live stream So subscribe if you haven't yet What we're going to be doing today is animating these guys Coming into this hangar With their jetpacks And we'll just see how it goes We're going to be using masking uh, In post production To erase these supports make it look like they're flying. So the first step is to take a clean frame so that you have a background for you to erase on. And you erase the pillars. This background is what's going to be showing. Uh, so bear in mind that you cannot... If you do camera movements, you have to... Um, you're going to have to take a background plate for each frame where the camera moves. Just focusing it. We take the first frame, which is the clean plate. We edit it, delete it. Now, we start the animation. Yeah, first frame of the animation. Done. Actually, I don't think that was entirely in focus. I have to make sure it's in focus. So one of the best things to improve the quality of your images is not always just increasing the resolution, but often it's just out of focus very slightly, but it makes it look hazy and unclear. So when this kind of thing happens, it's usually a good idea to change shot now. Uh, probably when you either bump the camera or your computer shuts down because it's out of battery and you can't match any of the lighting. Yeah. Okay, so we've opened up an After Effects, brand new After Effects project. I'm just going to import all the footage. I just keep mine on the desktop. Easiest place to get it. Let's open it up. Drag this into new composition. The same settings as the video. As you can see, it's a little bit underexposed. Which is a shame. But, no worries can fix it, sort of. Uh, first thing you want to do is control D and duplicate this layer here. And now the bottom one is going to be the clean plate. So we're going to right click it, go to time, freeze frame. So now if you turn off this top layer, you can see the bottom layer is just the same frame the whole way through. Now I've got our animation on top. And we need to rub this, these supports out. <laughs> so the first thing we can do is go to the first frame that the characters own. Um, press B to trim this work area. We'll just 
trim it here then trim comp to work area so it just starts from the animation now next step is to click on this then double click here to go into the edit mode and check the eraser tool so now we are erasing stuff from here if we go back here you can see that you can see the clean plate through the part that we erased so first step let's turn this on which just shows the transparency instead of being black so you can see better what you're doing and then the other thing you want to do is under your paint settings they may be somewhere here you can just go to window and make sure paint is checked and then in this paint window you want to change the duration to single frame so that when you press page down I painted that already okay so now if we paint on this and we go to the next frame it's gone so it only stays on that frame so now we just start the process and rub out all of this and then just make sure you rub out the shadows because you don't want shadows in there that kind of ruins the effect Okay, next one it's this and you, if your camera moved during the animation it will cause problems so you don't want to let your camera move while you're doing this animation I scroll to zoom in press H use your hand tool and move around and then eraser is control B you go back to the eraser just do some Let's brush. There we go. Now I'm on the erase again. And you might want to change the size. Window. Brushes. Okay, to edit the size of the brush. Go to brushes, mine is over here, but this might be different on your layout. So you just have to find it using window and brushes. So here we go back to paint and I'm going to be painting on this again. Decrease the diameter to do some more precise work around the legs it's only going to be showing for one frame so if you're not 100% accurate it's fine and now if we go here they are flying next frame and we start the process again Now I have to redraw in the shadows that we erased. Could either have done this first mask more carefully and kept the shadows in, but I chose just to erase all of them and I'm gonna redraw in some of them now. So I just duplicated my layer again. Now I'm gonna draw on top of this without the paint though. Just gonna delete that. There we go. Now I can see where the shadows are. I'm just gonna outline them. Now we go to double click that, brush tool, bring it black, and I'm gonna make it roughly the size and not hard at all. 
There we go. And also the opacity, we're going to decrease it to about 50%. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to trace around this. Once we've got started painting. I'm just going to trace that. And now check train on transparent. And there we go. Okay, now what we're going to do is go layer new adjustment layer and we're going to add on some motion blur. But that's a bit much. I want to go about 50 is usually good for motion detection and 0.25 shutter angle, which is about 90 degrees shutter, is 90 degrees. Angle. I'm just going to drop the resolution so you can see nice. Yeah, it looks decent enough. Okay, so now we're going to do the optical flares for the jets coming out of the jetpack and for that we're going to create a new solid layer on the top and go effect optical flares by video copilot um, got options and I think I've already made my own preset here it's just pretty simple glow and some irises. That's okay. Here we go. On transparent. And change the blending mode to add. And obviously that's way too bright. So we're just gonna go to home to come to the first frame. And zoom in on that. H to move the hand tool around, and then V to go back to normal selection. I'm going to be decreasing the scale to about 20, so looks about right. And now we just keyframe this position. So make sure that's keyframed up. And then press page down, adjust it. Just and you just repeat this process. This is the second method for adding in shadows again, is to duplicate this, move the paint effect, and mask out this shadow by press G tool, press G to go to the mask tool, and just draw a basic mask around it. Okay, I'm going to use a circle here. There we go. Now press V to edit this mask with the normal selection tool and 
on the project then just add this here this is going to be a shadow so I think click on mask path and keyframe it here so and here I think the shadow is more up here it's down shadow spot here. I'm just going to make it roughly right. There we go. And that's the shadow added in again. Press out bracket to cut it here since the shadow is on the mainframe. Yeah. And then go to mask feather increase to about 30 maybe a bit more just until it looks good there we go and now just we need to add in all of the jetpack effects what we're going to add it right now is make this widescreen just like so so we don't do any unnecessary work 